So the first system we're going to look at, our indoor hydroponic system, is our living wall. And this is my latest iteration of it. I've gone through so many changes with this thing. I love it. I absolutely love this design right here. Um, see these lights? I designed these lights because um, um, a friend of mine had said, um, you know, um, the old lights that we had, what if someone just came over and knocked them over? And I said, well, I take that as a challenge. Let me see if I can figure out a way to design some lights that are both poseable. So these can go about four to six inches inside or out and they can swing y'all, whatever you want to call it. Um, they can swing to the left. They can swing to the right. They're also supplementing our old school lights that we have above. And all of these are full spectrum. Um, just, just, this is a white light full spectrum and we have the pink light full spectrum. Um, this dude, I love this system. I absolutely, absolutely love this system. Let me show you guys something. So the entire living wall design, I, I think it's unique because it's only a quarter of an inch thick. This is it. That's it. And it's fabric planting uh, pots. So it's three feet wide, three feet long. So it's total nine linear square feet. And in those nine linear square feet, we, pardon me, those nine linear feet, we have 64 plants. We have fruiting plants. Let me see, take a look over here. There you go. And this has got clusters of cucumbers going from the top, going to the bottom, from the top all the way down to the bottom. I did not know how these guys are going to take. I'm not going to lie to you. I was a little nervous because this is untouched territory. Like this is, I had a dream. I woke up. I said, I want to invent this. I said, I think this will work. I did the science. I did my notes on it. I talked to some of the professionals. And once again, it was like, Chuck, man, your brain is out there. You, <laughs> your brain is out there, Holmes. And I was like, yeah, it is. But I want it to stay out there because that's how we come up with cool, creative stuff. Now, a few of the things that we're growing here. The whole plan with this wall was, I said, I wanted to grow winter greens during the summer. Now, some of you may know, some of you may not. I live in the southwestern United States. Right now, it's about 107.9 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Inside of our little station, the warm air blowing over the lights makes it about 80.2 in here, but it's definitely not 80.2 in here. It's more around 78, 79 degrees, which is great for winter greens. These guys are having no problem with this. So we have a roll of different types of lettuce right here. Um, I think this is curly leaf kale, or it might be Italian kale right here. I know this is one type of kale here. This is another type of kale down here. We have our little strawberries that started these from seed. Everything you see here, we started from seed except for the onion scraps, because that's still one of my favorite experiments is the onion scraps. This is the gift that keeps on giving, and they took to this system, and they are loving living in the living wall. Yeah, they kind of dig it over here. My bad, guys. I think this is the other type of kale down here, and this is actually one of our younger plants that we have in the system. Here's some basil, and I think this is lemon. Oh, this stuff is so amazing. You give it a rub, and we, we're growing lemon, and we're growing lime basil in our living wall system. And that is just so unique, guys. It's so cool. I think the possibility, I don't want to say the possibilities are endless because obviously there are certain things you're not going to grow into this system. You guys see this? I'm going to explain what this is in a second. And you'll actually see it on some of our older plants that we have in a system. I know what it is. I know what it is. That's sort of why I built the addition onto this system. If you guys can tell me what caused this, there might be a prize in it for you. I know what it is already, but let's see if you can tell me. Now this is our primary reservoir. Here's how the living wall system works. Inside there we do have a 30 watt pump that is connected to this feed line that you see right here. That pump sends the nutrient solution that's inside this reservoir way up the side of our living wall. We'll call it the frame. At the top of the frame there's another line that runs across right there. From that line, we have feeding ports going to the top of each one of the eight um, plant pot, plant holders on top. Because it's a fabric system, the nutrient solution flows through the entire system until it goes down here into, um, and now you know I love my tunnels, into our return tunnel, which then 
And this is a, I was inspired by my shower because I had this huge shower in the master bedroom. Uh, so, and I love how we have this huge drain just in the middle of the um, shower floor. And the shower floor like concaves from both sides. And I just love how the drain works. So it inspired me to do that to the um, tunnel system. And I think that turned out pretty good. I did snazzy it up a little bit. And I think this one is slate stone. And this is also textured. So this is super cool. You touch this and you can feel it. What is this, velvet? It's not. <laughs> it's slate stone. But I love how it plays off of the white from the original tunnel design. We didn't want to reinvent the wheel. No, not at all. We knew we had a good idea and we just wanted to see it through. Once again, here's some of the older plants. Can you guys tell me why that leaf looks like that? I know why. I know why. And if you guys look at the rest of the plants here, you'll see that hardly any of them look like that any longer. But I do know why. And it was remedied and it was corrected. And I do want to remind you guys, this is an experiment. Everything you see me doing in here is an experiment. It's all an experiment, all right? So I like to try to push the boundaries on what can be done, what hasn't been done, what might be done, maybe inspire you guys to do something different. Push the boundaries. Now, a few of the factors that make our system unique. I always told you guys, like, I see this as part of my spaceship. So this is where I have my experimental lab on my spaceship. Very, very minimum space, so I gotta work with what I gotta work with. I love how I design these lights. Everything is connected to um, a timer, to a smart plug. So everything can be controlled from my phone. And I love how I have it wired up from the ceiling um, braces. And it comes down to the top of one light and you don't see any wires. No wires, right? You get to the floor, wire comes out the bottom and it goes right up into the bottom of the other one and you see no lights. Because to me, like the biggest artist in the world is Mother Nature, the greatest artist in the world. So if I wanted to bring a bit of Mother Nature in the house, I said I wanted to do it with as much of an artistic flair as possible. And I absolutely love the design of these light stands. You guys see, it's not going anywhere. It's there. And this is painted textured slate stone as well. I actually, I also put these little tops on. Let me tell you, man, give me a little resin, give me my UV light, um, good money. <laughs> Isn't it cool how like the lights, the light bars themselves sit sort of recessed and side of the pipe? We did that so that we could lower the weight of the um, pipe and so that most of the support for the system wasn't going towards the light pole itself, but was actually going to support the um, light bar. And we ended up with a pretty neat creation. What do you guys think? You guys think it's cool? Yeah? I hope so. I hope so. Now, what is strange about what we're looking at right here? And I'll tell you, it's not the living wall itself, but it's something that's sticking out of that reservoir. And I gotta tell you guys this, once again, it came to me in a dream and I said, wouldn't it be so cool if we had an onboard auger or some type of onboard mixing system for when we put our master blend inside the reservoir. So here's what I came up with. Let's take a look at the top of the reservoir. We have a pre-cut hole right here and we have a pipe sticking out of it, a pole sticking out of it. Well, what's that you may ask? Did you ask that? Sure you did, humor me. <laughs> That's actually one of these. And this is a paint stirrer majibber. And I think the actual term for it is, it's got an actual name, hold on. <laughs> This is the Helix Paint Mixer. And I picked this up from Lowe's and I installed it in here so this is never gonna come out of here. And it's really easy to remove the top to the reservoir but I said, why be simple? I wanna be fancy. My name's Chuck Collins and that's hood for fancy. So right here, once again inspired by my own infinity, here's my own gas cap. And inside there, you can see the future. Oh, look at that, isn't it pretty cool? That's the reflection of the um, full spectrum LEDs above. That's pretty dope and make a really cool record cover, something like that. But the master blend gets put inside of here. Next step, what we would do is, I take this drill, and I just connect the drill to this. As a matter of fact, give me a second. Okay guys, now before I hook this up, I got an interesting story. This drill, you got a part of me for giggling because it's just so funny. Um, this drill is like almost 10 years old. It was the first power tool that I got when we moved, we transferred from New York to um, Tucson. And I, I literally had it in storage for like three or four years and I totally forgot I had it. Found the charger for it and I said, wouldn't it be cool if I could find a permanent home and a permanent job for this? So I actually did. So give me a second, let me get this guy hooked up. 
Okay, so we're just going to give this a couple more screws, get this tightened. So, that's simple. Now the drill is attached. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start adding our um, nutrients from Master Blend. And this is a basic Master Blend mix. Um, I do a quarter cup of um, each because this is, I believe, this is a 17 or 20 gallon um, reservoir. So it would be just as simple as, there's my port. I'm going to take that. There you go. And the thing about Master Blend is, yeah, make a little messy right there, but it'll live. You don't want these things to get all cluttered and, which we call it, um, cancel each other out. So you want to have them fully mixed. You want to add each part. There's three parts to it. You want to add each one in, one at a time. And then you want to make sure that you get it mixed up. So now that we have that first part in, let's lift this up. How cool is that? How cool is that? I mean, I can't think of a more efficient way to get this fully stirred in. And thank goodness for you, Black & Decker Drill, because you now have a second light. That'll do that. Doesn't take long at all. Let's get the other part set up. Okay, so here's our second part. I actually got a little bit smart this time. I went and got myself an old plastic cup, and I'm going to use that because I didn't like spilling stuff on top of the reservoir just now. So this gives me a little bit of bend to it, a little bit of control, and oh, much better, much better. So simple pour. And we'll make sure that gets all good and mixed up. I love science, guy. I hope you guys love science, man. This is so exciting. And science is beautiful because um, you take a, an idea, a dream, a thought, grab a piece of paper, and just with numbers prove that it can happen, and then just go out there and just build it. And I think that's just fascinating. Okay, so here's our third and final part. So again, our handy dandy drill, move that out the way. So I switched over to the plastic cup because it's a lot more versatile, easy to control. Ah, look at that, just beautiful. And there are certain parts of the nutrients in Master Blend, like I said, where you don't want, I don't want to get too technical with it because I don't want to say the wrong thing. But um, if they're not thoroughly mixed in and blended, I like the name Master Blend, they will cancel each other out and your plants aren't going to get the nutrients that they so desperately need and deserve. So I'm just doing this for a little bit longer because it's a power tool and I, uh, I love power tools. <laughs> but that should do that right about there. Now, when it comes to feeding times, how often do I feed? Because I do get that question as well. Um, roughly every two weeks. Roughly every two weeks. And it's, it's the same amount. Um, once the plants are fully grown and fully established, the amount doesn't change. Um, you do a half serving or half an amount when the plants are very, very young. I do like Master Blend because it goes through the entire life cycle of the plant. It's also very affordable. This kit that I got, I got a fairly large kit. I think it cost me 56 or $57 on Amazon. It's almost three years old now. That's how I'm, pardon me, yeah, it's over, well over two years old now. I've been using this stuff for two years. All of my hydroponic gardens that you've seen, this is the only stuff that I feed them. And whether it's indoor or outdoor, like I said, I stand by it. This is not an ad for them. I am not being paid by Master Blend. But if it's a good product, I want you guys to have a good product. Okay, guys, so there we go. Let's unscrew the drill, unhook it. There we go. Take our handy dandy cap. Put it right back in. In the system set, I can walk away. Bob's your uncle, other than watering it once a week, because this thing drinks like a monster. It honestly does, I swear it does. This thing drinks like a monster now that the plants are established. But I'm not going to complain about that. That's a good thing, right, guys? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I started this off, as like I said, and I can't stress this enough. This whole entire thing started off as a dream. And... Um, the famous Dr. Andy um, Wild, at, um, who's a huge influence on me and a huge inspiration to me, um, was really my influence on wanting to invent this living wall. Because, I don't know, the guy, he's, he's changed my life in so many exponential ways. And I, you know, just look him up. You'll see for yourselves. If, whether you know it or not, he's actually changed your life, whether you really know it or not. But he was my inspiration for building this living wall. And I, I just think he'll be proud of it. He'll be proud of it. Hey, I love you guys. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Science is fun. Science is awesome. Get out there. Get creating. And most of all, plant that first seed so that together we'll grow. Peace and blessings, my, my friends, until we meet again.